Hey, I know that some of you might say, another flag tutorial, really? And I'm gonna tell you that, yes, this is going to be a stationary flag this time, and this one is going to use Windshake. And why stationary? That is because the last one, the moving flag that I've made, the armature structure and the model is also going to work properly with Windshake. Where the one that I'm gonna make in this video needs a bit of tweaking and a bit of a different structure with everything. And also if you guys want to see any windshake tutorials on anything, then you can just suggest them down below. But let's jump into Blender for now. So let's just quickly make the model. First thing that we are going to need is going to be a cylinder, that's going to be the pole of the flag. And let's of course enable the screencast keys. Let's set the origin right here, so you can see what I'm pressing on my keyboard right now. But anyway, let's just scale this one downwards, and extend it on the Z. And then just shade it smoothly. And now let's add the plane that's going to be the flag. So I can press on Shift A, then go to Mesh and then Plane. And just rotate it on X by 90 degrees, and just move it upwards like so, so it's going to touch the pole. Then I can just move this edge upwards around somewhere right here. And this should be appropriate for a flag size. And now what I need to do is add loop cuts to the flag by pressing on Ctrl and R. And I'm just going to add around this amount, which is 24. And a bit less horizontally, which is 14. And now while having the pole and the flag, we can select these both. And then just rotate them on Y by 45 degrees. Since this flag is going to be hanging from like a wall for example. And I can also select this face on the top, then go to the normal view, and just drag it a little bit downwards. And just select everything, go into the edit mode, and just shade it smoothly again. And on the pole what I like to do is enable auto smooth on 55 degrees, and the flag isn't going to have the auto smooth because it's going to have the clock simulations later, which can create some visual deformations. And for now you can see how this flag is going to be attached to basically this pole right here. And usually how a flag is connected to this is through the edge points right here. So what we need to do is go to the vertex selection mode. You can press 1, 2, 3 on your keyboard to change between these or just press on the icon. And we want to select this edge as well as this one. Then here in the vertex groups, we just want to create a new vertex group. And this is going to be the pin group. And then we just assign the selected vertices, which is these two, to this pin group right here by pressing on the assign button. So if I deselect these two now, and press on select from the group, it's going to select these two again. And for now I can unhide the pole. And this is where we do the clove simulation. So on the right hand side, under the modifiers, there is going to be this button, which takes you to the physics properties. And from the physics properties, we want to press on the clove. And after I choose the clove simulation, right now we are on the first frame. And if I press the spacebar, it's going to start the simulation. And if I hold shift and the arrow keys, I can go from the start and to the end. But right now you saw that the clove simulation was, well, failing. And that's because we need to assign few settings on the right hand side. One is going to be the shape. This is where we put the pin group that we just created. This will make it so if you start the simulation, it's going to hold onto this pin group right there. And you can see that it's already giving like a proper flag simulation, but there was some clipping. And we don't really want any clipping, so that's why we go into the collision and enable self collision right here. And these default settings are pretty alright. So I can start this simulation once again. And now the flag is going to look like this. And this is pretty alright for a basic flag model, right? This is how normally a flag would behave. It would be mainly holding onto this pin point, which would be holding it around this shape. But another thing you can do is for example mess around with these different properties. For example the vertex mass, that we can change to 1 kilogram. Now if I reset the simulation and press on play, you can see that it's kind of going in a different way. And there is also the stiffness settings, we have the tension, compression, shear and bending, as well as the damping. This one we don't really need, same with the pressure. These settings right here are the main ones that you can mess around with, 
Same with a bit of the self collision right here. I could change this one to 0.01 instead of 0.15. And just press on play again. Or even to 0.1, which is going to just break everything. And we don't really want that, so yeah. 0.02 also works alright. But I'm probably just going to leave it at 0.01 for now. And if it comes to the settings, the different thing that you can change are the quality steps. For example, I can add two extra steps on the collision, so it's going to simulate it more accurately. And same with the quality steps right here on the top. So I can reset it again and just press on play. And whenever we have something that we like, for example the flag being in this position, we can just press spacebar to pause the simulation. And we can also navigate with the arrow keys without pressing shift. But I'm just going to hold it like this. And there is also different stuff that you might have noticed, with the geometry being just kind of bad in this place right here. And there is two ways that we can fix that. One of them would be going into the edit mode, going to the face selection, then just selecting everything, and searching for the triangulate faces option. And then deselect everything, go back to the object mode, and restart the simulation again. Then if I press on play, It's going to again play the simulation, and you can see that there isn't too many deformation going on anymore. And another thing that you can do, this can also be done while having the faces triangulated, is just selecting everything and then just subdividing it. Like this. Now this is going to cause the flag to have more geometry, which could potentially mean more lag if you have a lot of assets like this in your game. But another thing is that it's going to have more detail. So it's going to be like this. But I'm just going to keep it without the subdivision. And what I could do really quickly right now is add a texture to this flag. And I can do so by going into the shading and while having this flag selected, press on a new material. And I also have a node wrangler add-on, I'm pretty sure this is the one that adds the nodes. If I'm wrong someone can correct me in the comments. But what this add-on allows me to do is for example if I have this principled BSDF selected, I can simply press on Ctrl T to add a image texture node with already set coordinate nodes. So let me just press on a random flag texture that I downloaded from the internet. And I got this British flag PNG from Wikipedia. So now I'm just gonna go back to the modeling. And here I kind of just need to go into the object mode again and just restart the simulation. So if I go back to the material preview, I'm going to have the British flag right here. And of course you could apply the material on the PBR texture in Roblox Studio, but then you also might have to manage the UV editing. But as we basically have this model right now, we need to apply the geometry that it has now. And we do so by going into the object, then apply, and then right here on the bottom, you're going to have the Visual Geometry to Mesh option. So now it's not going to have the club simulation anymore. And you can see that it has the geometry applied in the Edit mode too. And now we need to add an armature to this flag, because the bones are going to have the wind simulation later. So while having nothing selected, I'm going to press on Shift A, and then I'm going to add the armature right here. And then it's going to add this bone, and this armature object in the hierarchy. And for now I can hide the cylinder and just move this bone to the flag. And just rotate it on X by 180 degrees. So this one I want to just position roughly around where the point is from which the flag is hanging on. And that is because these points, these are the points that we don't want to move. So now with this armature right here, I can go into the armature edit mode and just select this point on the bottom. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit. And we need to structure the armature in a way where it's going to look natural when this flag is going to be moved on the wind. If you see something like, for example, this basically central hole part, we don't want to have any bones next to each other, because if, for example, there is a bone on this side, it's going to interfere with a bone on this side right here. And it's going to make it where the flag is going to be clipping into itself. So for this whole area, we basically just want to make one big bone that's going down right here. And if you are having trouble seeing the bones, you can go into the armature properties and in the viewport display select in front. So it's going to be right here. And actually I'm just going to make it two bones for now. Because this is gonna make it so it's going to have a bit more detail. 
but you can see how this flag on the bottom is separated into three different kind of sections. One of these sections is just going straight down, so I can add a bone like this. Then another one, which is this one, I need to give it a separate bone that's going to stay on here and just control the weight of this area. And I can do so by pressing on one of the bones and just pressing on Shift and D to duplicate it. And just position it right there. And you are going to see this line of dots. That means that the bone is going to be connected to the parent bone right here. If you for some reason can't see this connection, what you need to do is select this point, the starting point of this bone, and the ending point of the previous bone, and press on Ctrl P. And I don't have these options right now, but I could for example just clear the parent. So now this bone is going to be separate from the hierarchy, and again press on this point, then this point again, and just Ctrl P. Oh, this is my bad, you need to select the whole bone, then this point, and then press on the Ctrl P menu. And if you select connected, that's going to make it so this bone is going to travel to this point right here, and we don't want that. We want to select the keep offset. So it's going to make the checkered line right here again. So now this one is going to be offset from the parent. And there is also this other area right here that we could either leave or just add another bone where this one is going to be just a little bit smaller. So it's going to have less influence over this area. And that's basically everything for the flag structure. So hey, this is something that I noticed in editing and I forgot to add another bone in this little area right here because this part is also kind of just standing out. So it would be good to just add a bone right here. And to apply the armature to the flag, we need to go into the object mode again, then select the flag, then the armature, and press on Ctrl P. And you need to select the object that you want to parent first, and then the armature later, because you're not gonna have these options right here. And then we want to select with automatic weights. So if I for example select the flag, and then go into the weight paint mode, right now you will see how these bones have weight on a part of the mesh. And the weight is going to be shown right here from the vertex groups. And then there is a little bit of manual fixing that we need to do, and that is because we don't want these pin points to move. This first bone isn't going to be moving anyway, so we don't need to do anything with this one, but this one that's a bit lower, we want to remove the weight from this area here. And we do so by changing the brush weight, I did this very right click by the way. You can also change it here on the top, but we need to set it to zero. And just go over this area like so. And then I can just smear it out a little bit. And just do some corrections. Something around there should be good. And also zero weight at the other corner. I could also go back to the object mode and just hide the armature, so it's a bit easier to see in the weight paint mode. And here this bone, you can see that it has red on this area, but not really too much here. And we want this bone to have influence over all of this, so that means we need to add a bit more weight right here. Around 0.8. Because again, this is going to prevent clipping. And I actually need to unhide the armature. We will see what happened right here. Now this bone that's right here, this is the bone O2. I don't know why, but it also should have had a lot of more area around this part and not only here. So again, we need to do manual fixing. And then the rest seems to be pretty good. So that's for the weight painting part. And now we just want to export this model. So we select everything, go to file, export and then select FBX. And in the settings we want to select selected objects, change the scale to 0.05, then Z to forward, and we want to apply transforms. 
In the Geometry tab, we want to apply modifiers if we have any. Under the Armature, we want to select only Deform Bones and Dot Add Leaf Bones. And deselect Bake Animations because we don't have any animations. And also, if you want to have the texture, you can change the Path Mode to Copy and select this box right here. And then just press on Export FBX. And then just wait for Roblox Studio to update. And in Roblox Studio, we want to select Import 3D. And after we select our flag, you can see the model here. And it looks a bit weird, but don't worry, we can select the double-sided option in the engine. But you need to make sure that you have the armature with the bones. If you don't have the armature, that means you either didn't apply it correctly or didn't export it right. But then we have the plane, which is the flag and the cylinder. And I don't need to upload this to Roblox, so I'm just going to press on import. And it's going to create our stationary flag model right here. And now I'm just going to remove the initial poses and the animation controller. And this root part is going to have the bones from the previous armature. But on the plane we want to select double sided. So it's going to fix our flag like this. And really quickly I'm just going to add something like a brick wall. Just so I can position the flag somewhere. And now if you don't know how to set up Windshake, I recommend that you watch my other video. But you basically need the module and the initialize script for it to work. We need to use the init method. And to apply the wind to the flag, we need to add the windshake tag to every single one of these bones. Except the first one at the top. So I can just select them and then press on the plus and just select the windshake tag. If you don't have the tag you can just write it down. So I can just do a playtest to show this off. And this is our flag moving on the wind right here. But there is something wrong because you can see a bit of clipping. And that's probably because I added too much wind speed and too much wind power. Because it should be acting like this normally with the default settings. And also because the wind is blowing in this direction, it's going to behave a bit differently than for example if it was rotated like this. But I could probably just change the wind direction for example. And overall for a quick tip, if you have too much clipping on your flag, what you need to do is go back to Blender and back to the weight paint because too much clipping means that if this bone, for example, is moving this part around, you either need to adjust the weight, so this part is going to move correspondingly with this one, so you saw as these two parts were clipping with each other, you will need to make it so this area also has the same weight as this one. You will need to go over like so. And also you need to make sure that this bone isn't interfering with this. Now I think I did a bit of a mistake, where I shouldn't have removed the weight from this part right here. So it was supposed to be something of this sort. And I can also see that there is some weight left in the corner right here that isn't supposed to be there. And that's why it's moving. So just make sure that you are double checking every single bone. And I know that some people are going to ask this, but sadly with this method, you won't be able to make it so the flag is going to unfold or fold if there is for example more wind. You could also make a different flag as I mentioned in one of my posts where the smart bone one is going to work with windshake and that one is unfolded. So I'm just going to bring it into this place really quickly where this is the stationary flag from that tutorial so I'm just going to add the windshake tag to all of the bones and present it how it works. Then add the texture which is a bit blurry because of the UV coordinates and I'm just going to show this example of how the flag looks with the wind. So this is how the flag is going to behave, although like I said don't mind the ugly texture, if it's for example unfolded. And it's going to work even if I change the settings. But overall I prefer something like this. So yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So if you found this tutorial informative then you can leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to support me. But yeah, if you have any windshake tutorials that you want to see me make then you can suggest them up below. But I hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.